This is Mortgage Lending Mastery. Get the knowledge you need from America's mortgage mentor with more than 35 years of experience and over $1 billion in lifetime fundings. You'll learn to advance your mortgage practice quickly and efficiently. Also, be sure to check out Jen's book, Launch, How to Take Your Business to New Heights. Available on Amazon. For a signed copy, contact Jen at jenduplessis.com. Now, here is certified mortgage planner and CEO of Kinetic Spark Consulting, Jen Duplessis. Hey everyone, and welcome back to this episode. I am so delighted today to have a guest from over the big pond over in the UK in London, uh, Frederick Sandwall, and he is um, a global sales consultant. He has global sales consulting. And I want to tell you a little bit about him before we actually introduce him on onto the show. But you can see the beautiful sunset behind him in uh, London right now, which is so exciting. But he's a financier an investor, a serial entrepreneur, and a best-selling author. In fact, he, his book is called How to Build Trust. Um, how to, I'm sorry, his book is called Trust is the New Currency. The subtitle is How to Build Trust, Attract the Right Partners, and Create Wealth Through Business and Investments. And one of the things that I really like that he's doing is really working with new entrepreneurs, no matter what their age, and really focusing on helping his, his sons as well to learn how to invest and build wealth, you know, um, Early on, I absolutely love that. He's a formal special forces uh, captain in the in the Swedish. What do you call it? Government or Swedish? Uh, it, it, it's the same as uh, if compared with America. It's the same as your Navy SEALs, and people don't usually know. Oh, exactly Navy, what oh so that's even better. Yeah, even better. <laughs> uh, he spent many years running businesses even before he left the military. Um, he spent over twenty years gaining experience with management and consulting and working at senior levels um, with the largest organizations around around the world. Uh, he's worked in forty countries. And, you know, he's really just a fundraiser. So he's probably very connected, as we're going to find out, um, in raising money for businesses to be um, very, very successful. And so without further ado, Frederick, we're happy, happy, happy to have you here today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm very pleased to be on such a famous uh, podcast as your as yours uh, okay. it's, it's one of the biggest in the world in your space and uh, it's absolutely only I hope to give good value now oh, thank you and I know you will I know you will and we have tons of uh, links and whatnot that we're going to be sharing you know in the episode notes so everyone will have the chance to go and, and see all the wonderful things that you can do um, but I want to start with you know where did this all start tell us about your your upbringing and how you you know got into this serial entrepreneurial piece of this you know with money given the fact that you know if you're in the military typically military people aren't you know, that versed in, in finance. And, and so there yeah. must be something that was in your background that, that got you excited about it. Yeah, yeah, thanks for asking. That's a, that's a great starting question. So I grew up in the countryside in Sweden. Uh, that's in north part of uh, Europe. So uh, there in Sweden, I grew up in a very normal family. My mom was working as a London nurse. Dad was working uh, in, the, in a mid-management uh, level job in, in a factory. So from there... Uh, I, I was the oldest. I had to find my way, really. Yeah. Uh, responsible with leadership with my three siblings when I was very young. Uh, first business when I was 17. And the purpose of that one was to learn how to run a business. And it was selling marketing space. Uh, and that was great because I got many no's. Lots of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm and then, sure. As we all do, right? We all get them. Yeah, which, which leads to yeses now and then as well. Yes. So from there, I moved into the military. Uh, I didn't expect to, to stay for that long because uh, Special Forces uh, super competitive, extremely hard to get in. It's even harder to be one of the best. Uh, yeah. But I, I was fortunate to be selected to, to become an officer there and, and I stayed for many years. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, and, that, and that allowed me to to grow as an individual, to help people uh, in Sweden and all over the world as well, uh, in, in conflicts and in aid missions and, and peacekeeping as well as ultimately uh, the, the worst side of the scale as well. Yeah. Uh, while I was doing all of that, uh, unusually for being in the military and to my commander's uh, disbelief, I got two business degrees. Uh, I was running uh, three businesses at the same time. Uh, in investment, consulting, and real estate. 
so when it was later time to leave, I was extremely ready uh, to just go straight into business. So I uh, did a, a, a third degree at MBA and then jumped into management consulting full time. So that's very much how I got into working outside the military. I'm sure we can come back into investments and yeah. launches later. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. So, so let's talk about, cause that, there are several things that we're going to talk about from an entrepreneur standpoint, but I want to really hone in on real estate. What are you doing in the space of real estate? And I know that you have a lot of properties and a lot of real estate. Um, you were just running from being a landlord, right? And I, I know that one, uh, <laughs> but running from being a landlord and, um, you know, so what got you specifically into the real estate part? And, and is that where you actually started or was that something later on that, you know, because you saw everyone gaining a lot of wealth through it? I yeah. started early because my dad was, was dabbling, really dabbling with real estate uh, when I was young. So I was helping him. I was learning how to use uh, all kind of tools. I know all the trades from having done it when I was very young which is sometimes uh, useful yes. uh, to save some money. But that's not what I ultimately would say that people should do in real estate. So I, I came from a practical point of view. I knew how to build uh, things. Uh, and then from there, I also saw how he was successful, but more often unsuccessful in terms of picking the right tenants uh, and making things work and not doing anything creative at all. I mean, you are very much a specialist in mortgages. It, it, it doesn't even know what like a refinance properly is to extract money for the next, next investment. All of those things was done wrong. So I got real estate early on, and then uh, I actually got into commercial real estate, was my own first one, accidentally. Uh, and, uh, and through tax reasons, I, I, together with my wife, have got a commercial property, which is uh, 300 hectares, which is like 600 acres of forest in Sweden. Oh, wow. So, Money does grow on trees. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Not only the paper, unless we use plastic, but also uh, if I do nothing, just the, the pure growth of the trees will be uh, just to translate into monetary value like eighty thousand uh, dollars at least a year for just the growth, which you can decide to take this year or accumulate a couple of years if you got the right thing. So yeah, that's how I got into real estate, which is very different from where I am today, where I have many, many tenants uh, in and around London and parts of the UK. Uh, and I do develop things. I invest in other people's deals. So I've done the whole value chain from finding it right, funding it right, uh, and then fixing it to the right level and then filling and extremely occasionally flipping. But more importantly, learn to really, really flourish the portfolio uh, by thinking about the small details like I learned in Special Forces. That makes a huge compounded yeah. uh, result. Yeah, and I imagine, you know, through that trial and error, which was probably very difficult for you to get through because, uh, you know, as someone being in the military, because I have my families in the military, and yes. as being in the military, you know, everything is so regimented. And so sure. developing your own uh, process probably took some time Did. to do and that you had to trial and error quite a bit. So, so you're doing buy and holds primarily, you know, both exactly. commercial and um, residential, I'm sure. Are you dabbling in Airbnb these days? Uh, all of my friends are doing it. And uh, my, my next larger commercial uh, residential deal will be exactly that. It will be Airbnb, but I will literally give the keys to Helicord service accommodation. Yeah. But the, ultimately, it is uh, Airbnb often. Uh, they will just get the keys and then they, they will operate it. So yeah. I'll meanwhile, folks are adding larger assets, which other people can match. Um, yeah. Other people's capital as well to almost like create like a fund uh, of, of other people's money so they can also benefit from my knowledge. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's wonderful. And, you know, one of the big things that's happening here in the U.S. is now uh, multifamily Airbnb, yeah, you know. know. And, uh, and so I'm in Airbnbs as well. So I was just wondering if you, uh, you were, I find it, I love it. I absolutely love it. So let me ask you some questions about entrepreneurship because, you know, it's become, I mean, it's crazy busy. <laughs> it's crazy busy. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. You're an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. My kids are entrepreneurs. You know, everyone wants to be an entrepreneur and sort of get away from the brick and mortar world and, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. you know, uh, have that, that great lifestyle. And of course, that's the premise of my entire, you know, coaching program is a lifestyle business mastery is having that yes. lifestyle first and then building a business around it so that you can enjoy it. Right. And, um, so, so what is, what, where's the passion or not even where's the passion, but what is it that, that really gets you excited or brings you a lot of joy as you're helping new entrepreneurs, um, specifically as it relates to them doing it right from the very beginning. So they're not one yeah. of those horrible statistics that are still out there that over 50% of small businesses fail in the first year. Yeah, I mean the the statistics, statistics really says that don't 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 become an entrepreneur at all. Right. Uh, entrepreneurs today are what the the rock stars uh, were earlier. So the rock stars today is really the entrepreneurs, and often if you try to combine with some kind of influencing thing online, then you got like two massive ticks in the box, uh, and that is exciting. It gives you lots of energy, but it's also so easy to fail because yeah. uh, usually the super basic things like to do some kind of test. Does anyone even want to buy what I intend to offer to the world? Yeah, because um, the passion's there to just give it and throw it down people's throats, right? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's very, very, actually, it can become very, very financially dangerous. It's very easy to get also into debt nowadays. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, you are working in your business, on your business, and you're paying for your business, and you might not have that super vital uh, first one, two, three, four uh, customers. Yeah. So uh, one of the first things I try to explain is you can't really get into entrepreneurship if you shy away from the word of sales. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you've been working with, with uh, the mortgage industry for many, many years. Imagine if you refused to do any kind of customer contact. Yeah, yeah. I, I, got, I, got a fellow, I got a fellow entrepreneur here in the UK. He's a massive podcast with yeah, many millions following his work. His dad used to say, uh, I love this, he was a pub landlord, and he said, I love this pub. Uh, if we just can get rid of like the, the, the customers and the employees, it would be ideal. <laughs> right, right. right so well, and we've all been there too. I mean, we've all been there in our thoughts yeah, about entrepreneurship. Yeah. So, <laughs> if I could uh, be yes, an entrepreneur and not really have to deal with anything, sure. it would be great. <laughs> yeah, so I'd like to take an example of, of customers from my, my this this business week in, in London, uh, England, uh, where I got a, a nice text message from the police. Would you like to collect your keys uh, from the police? And like, oh, uh, which, which, which keys, which property? Apparently two of my tenants have decided that today is a good day for a knife fight. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah, uh, but it wasn't even true in the end. But... Um, they had been arrested and so on and so forth. And police kicked out all the doors in the whole property. Oh my gosh. So the tenants are my customers. You have to love your customers, right? Uh, back to your very important question, how to get started in entrepreneurship. Uh, think about, it's, it's used in common language, minimum viable product. What is the very least you can actually take your idea into something and try to test it, test sell it before you even start the business. That's one of the most important advice, I think. Uh, do some kind of rough numbers before you start and why not connect with someone just like you uh, someone who can be your mentor coach role model uh, so many good books so much good free content out there on podcasts you don't have to do this on your own so you can also pull up with other people in the same space uh, to have some kind of like masterminding or support group yeah those are a couple of things on top of my head yeah, no, I really like that. And you know, it's ironic because I don't know if you've ever heard of the Marketers Cruise, um, but it is an international phenomenon. It's, yeah. it's awesome. I'll have to talk to you about it offline and see if you want to go next year. But yeah. I'm heading there in January and it's an eight day cruise and that's all it is, is us sharing our ideas and getting yeah. feedback from everyone. And there's 450 people from around the world coming and um, so, for example, uh, Russ and, uh, Russell Brenson is coming, you know, ClickFunnels owner. He's yeah, yeah. part of it. I mean, there's all kinds of people who are, who are um, coming that are, you know, movers and shakers. And, and okay. it doesn't have to be just in online marketing or businesses, you know, that are entrepreneur. But uh, doctors come and realtors and lenders come as well to get feedback for the product offerings that they have and the services that they're providing and to really collaborate with others that have been there, done that. And it allows yeah. me for someone who's been there, done that to do the same thing to other people that are at different levels, you know, than I am. I'm not way up here, but I'm not way at the bottom no, either. 
Yeah, and, we, we, we got a fair, fair amount of experience. Now, I, I love that idea. And also what I like in particular about it is it's off-site. Yes. You can't carry on doing your own business. That's great. And also another thing is you mix up different industries. Yes. There's so many things to learn from other industries that you can apply into your world. And yeah. um, just like yeah. you travel, the same thing, you can steal ideas from all over the world and apply it where you live. Yeah. Well, and, and what's even best about it, just to piggyback on that real quick, is that absolutely, absolutely. no selling is allowed. None. Okay. None. Only joint venturing, only collaboration, only sharing, only giving, only receiving. That's what's so fun about it. So I'm so excited. We, there's this thing called pizza and profits. And so that all happens, you know, up on one of the decks in the middle of the yeah. night. <laughs> right. You know so, yeah, that, that's wonderful. I think that that's, you know, thank you for sharing that. And I think no matter what business you're in, you know, so, so a lot of my listeners are lenders and realtors. It's, you know, maybe your passion, if you're passionate about a specific type of real estate or a specific product and lending, yes. you know, is making sure that you have the marketplace in your area to be able to serve that. Um, you know, and, and I say that locally because a lot of times real estate is local. Um, so what are the, um, and I, and we are, you've already addressed some sort of the, the biggest mistakes people make when they're trying to raise money for their business. But I, I want to go deeper into that um, because not everyone is going to be raising money. Um, sure. But there are a lot of solopreneurs who are listening to this podcast. So what are, what, let's talk about why I would want to raise money as a solopreneur. Because yep. I'm thinking, you know, I'm just small beans. Why would I want to raise money? Um, what benefit is it? And then tell us about the mistakes that people make as they're trying to um, collaborate or bring investors on. Yeah, happy to. So uh, I've been working with raising finance for businesses in many, di many different ways. Everything from a partnership, like you said, a JV uh, or straight loans uh, or whatever. And also I have had uh, taking money from individuals from companies, from American companies, from companies in, in, in the Middle East, uh, as well as from uh, pension, pension trusts. So there is money everywhere. Uh, money is usually closer than you think. Mm. Often there might even be money in, in your closest family. And, and that's a fairly easy way, especially if you like younger. Why not ask your parents? Oh, of course. At least, for the, at least for, this, for, uh, for, the, for the seed capital. So talk about different stages. So the very first money you might put in might be your own. Uh, uh, at the seed stage, where uh, you don't really have any sales at all, or you might have less than what you'd like to make as a salary for a year. That's very much where you're at the seed stage. And then you, you move beyond that. And, and at that time, it's, it's tough because banks will only give you money if you got something else as a security, usually. Right. Uh, most other people would love to have a security uh, on, on you and everything you own if they can. And you would like to do the exact opposite if you can. Right. Uh, so Until you're the <laughs> lender. Exactly. Until you're the lender. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so the lender likes to have security, and as a borrower, you don't want to give security if, if you right. don't have it. Right. So at that stage, it's also quite easy to get any kind of smaller business lending like a business credit card and so on which can absolutely be the the starting point uh, unfortunately at that stage often they will still hold your personal asset as a, as collateral unfortunately so next stage might be that you dare to ask other people for money so taking a, an example i've invested into uh, that stage of multiple business world they, like this they have got some sales they have some ideas they have some technology or whatever it might be and then they just need to have more money to open the tap, to have more staff, more technology, more development, or whatever it might be. But there's usually like a big chunk, but then you might need to have 50, 100,000 pounds or a couple of hundred thousand pounds to do the next step. Yeah. Uh, that uh, big gap for growth. That's that big, yeah, exactly. you know, exactly. acceleration of growth. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So really just talk about multiplying what you have at that stage. And, and, and for that, you can actually, uh, now you've got a new concept which is uh, very exciting all, all over the world, which is crowdfunding. Right. So instead of you finding every single investor, you might actually work with a platform. So I, I am a shareholder uh, and owner of, of one platform which is called Crowd With Us, which is in the real estate space. So there we have developers who need to pitch their idea to us to get it certified and then to, to go to, to market. 
Yeah, I love uh, that. I love that. What are some places that someone could find if it's not just in the real estate space, you know, if we're, yeah. if we're talking about solopreneurs that, that we, have, we have non we have exactly, Yeah. Yeah, we've got exactly the same. I can't remember the brand that you got in, in America. Uh, it's, it's very logical <laughs> in terms of you, you also got crowdfunding for businesses at early stages uh, where people can basically decide the rate that they are willing to give uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, I love that. So, so what mistakes do people make when they're, when they're looking for crowdfunding? Um, yeah, yeah. Is there, is there going out and saying, you know, what do I do now? Second. How do I get it? Take this one. Uh, so you, usual mistakes I, I, I spot to notice all the time is where they uh, don't prepare for it. They don't do the due diligence on themselves that you, they would like to have if they would give money themselves. So yeah. uh, you need to not have a perfect pitch. You don't need to have a perfect video. You don't need to have anything perfect, but it need, you, you think again, minimum viable product. What's the very least you would like to have? Well, how much do you need? For how long time? What are you prepared to offer in return? Uh, and how will I get the money back as an investor? Yeah. What's like the, the duration? Uh, and what kind of credibility do you have? Have you been doing this before? Have you been growing businesses in of this kind? Or are you a virgin? This is your very first baby. That means that it is, it's also riskier. Do you know the industry? All of those things come together as a nice picture which gives you a foundation to dare to even ask for money. If you don't have that in, in place, it's very hard for you to have the credibility to attract any money at all. Yeah. Uh, to, to add to that picture, assuming that you now start to pitch people that you don't know so well, that means that they will do their own due diligence and they will find out a lot about you by using uh, Mr. Google. Yes, the <laughs> gospel example. of Google. <laughs> exactly. So people will Google you most likely even before they have met you. So yeah. uh, Google yourself so you know what people will find at the very least. Try to do st something about it. And... Uh, if you are uh, like the two people who are on this podcast, that you're creating content, that's actually, actually quite good because you can create content and get the things you would like to be associated with yourself, tagged to yourself. You might be on a podcast, you might be on YouTube, you might have relevant uh, blog, anything that will put you as a trustworthy person, ideally. Uh, so people even dare to uh, part their savings potentially and give to you so you can grow them on their behalf. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And you know, um, one of the things that I was thinking about as you're talking is yep. that um, a lot of people, you know, they've had a job all their lives. Right. True. And one of, one of the, uh, and I'll be, I'm going to be starting a new podcast and I most likely will, will publish you in both yeah. of these podcasts as well. Yes, but my new podcast is called From Success to Significance, Life After yeah. Breaking Through Glass Ceilings. And one of the things about that is that a lot of people, you know, have, um, and, and you are, of course, we're talking about entrepreneurship as a young person, and I want to still talk about that, but, yep. but entrepreneurship is someone who's had a job, right, for yes, years and years, and, years and now they're very successful, you've done it, I've done it, and now we say we want to go into that entrepreneurship. What, what would you advise uh, from a learning perspective for someone to go from, you know, knowing how to make widgets yep. very well to having to do sales and accounting and marketing and branding and the back office things, like all yep. of the pieces <laughs> and not just the widget. Yeah. How do they learn? How do they learn? It's, to make it's, it's, it's super overwhelming to start with. It is. And, and you don't know what you don't know, but you become aware very soon that there are many things that you don't know. I mean, yes. just take uh, the, the aspect of, of tax. Uh, yeah. Value added tax. Yeah. Uh, and all the, 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 the good rules and the stupid rules that uh, each government have, have given us to play according to. So yeah, there are many things. So how do you do that? Uh, I, I would say many, many people that I, I know are exactly in our space where, where we are. So they, they are having there are business owners small or big business owners uh growing what they, they they do one thing to just draw as a learning uh also with my podcast i see that there's a quite high amount of people who don't have like well people have got very different education background to put it like right. that so right. your university or non-existing university degrees doesn't really matter right. at all 
uh, and you will most likely have so many years of experience between when you studied to today. So number one, your studies doesn't really matter at all unless you can pull some good learnings from it. Right, right. Um, uh, you might even have some old books in your bookshelf that you have never ever applied. Might be a marketing book or something else that can come back in, into use. Uh, uh, I would say listen to entrepreneurial podcasts, uh, number one, because that means you will have you will now create a peer group. Even if you're alone, you feel, I know no entrepreneurs. That's a great place to start because yes, like, like we all know, you, you very much become like the average of the people you hang around with. And a podcast yeah. with great guests on it is a perfect place because that means now you're hanging around with, with millionaires, maybe even billionaires, and learning from how they did it. Uh, yeah. So how, how to get over that massive hurdle of it feels like too much. Uh, try to work with other people who are in the same space. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. The wheel. Uh, there are so many people who have done the same journey. Tag along to someone, uh, ask someone to help you. And in many cases, a, a really good business partner who is not like you, who is the opposite of you, can be a, a, a blessing and a hell, both in disguise. <laughs> So, so yes, to take one example, I decided to work with my, my uh, youngest brother. Uh, I was a management consulting partner. He was uh, a banker. Uh, in terms of profiles and personalities, I'm more extrovert than he is. And he's more detail-oriented than I am. Uh, he uh, is more keen to work with, with the back office systems, while I'm very happy to deal with, with customer interaction and, and getting new customers. So having a business partner or if you don't want to split the, the business to have uh, some kind of employee to work on you on a contract basis. Uh, so again, you can be an entrepreneur. So that means you're an entrepreneur under a bigger entrepreneur yeah. and that's fine. Yeah, that's I totally love that. Intra entrepreneur. Um, yeah. yeah. And what do you think about pulling, pulling and building an advisory board together as well as you're that's doing perfect. it just to test your market and, you know, pull from different skills that you've seen in your marketplace? Um, yeah, no, that, that, that's, that's super valuable. So, for example, one of my next things that is on my to-do list, I've got one which is to be do uh, like a, uh, a group of companies. Uh, to acquire and on the other side is to do the, the real estate fund and for both of them my advisors my board of advisors would be one of the most important things in the whole thing because ultimately uh, the advisors and the, the people I, I associate myself with will set the aspiration level it will set the, the level of funding I will actually ultimately get uh, and it will open doors open network and give access or the opposite if I pick the wrong people. So yeah. to have a board of advisors, so one company I'm working with, it's uh, in the lending space, they're called Sapphire Lending. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the biggest shareholders, I'm growing that business from the inside, but I'm just on the board. So there we have got, again, opposite personalities on the board. So we've got uh, the business owner, who's very much working with the, with the sales and uh, the systems and managing staff, but then we've got two very different board members. Again, you can have, have a board member for very little money. Many people who are experienced just like to give and help. So you might get your non-executive board member, just advisor, helping on a monthly basis, just check in with things. And that's invaluable in terms of accountability, uh, keeping you on track, uh, advice. Uh, and again, open those doors when the time is essential for you. Yeah, and I think that's really important because, you know, you can feel like an island. You really yes. can feel like an island as an entrepreneur and a solo entrepreneur that no one understands the problems you're going through. But in fact, everyone's been through them at some point. You just need to find the right person, you know, to help guide you through them. I think the other important thing about a board of advisors, um, and this is, you know, and by the way, those that are listening, I'm not talking about your board for your, you know, board of directors. We're talking about a board of advisors. And yep. Um, is that they can also be the string to your helium balloon and kind of bring you down a little bit and, in a good way. I'm not saying yep. in a bad way, in a good way to say, hold on, hold on. You're getting a little ahead of yourself there. Let's pull you back in. And yep. I think that that's been, you know, extremely um, helpful. So I want to just switch gears as we kind of finish up here today and talk Perfect. about 
um, what you're telling your sons, because I know that you have some young kids, and I know um, they're on, they're on, they have a podcast as well, right? One yep, of them yep, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, and I know he's going to be on the podcast here soon, um, hopefully as well, because we we okay. have reached out to him too. Love it. But um, so, what are you telling young people? Uh, because now, tell us about him first of all. He's very young. Yep. I know, I know a girl who is six year or she's nine years old now, but she started her podcast when she was six. Great. And uh, I have a very, very smart, intelligent grandchild who's going to be six in a couple of weeks. And I can't wait to hear what you um, have told him so that we can share that yeah. with her as well. Perfect. perfect. Yeah, so uh, I've got two sons. Sean is uh, 13 and Ivan is 15. So they are, they're both obviously uh, still in school. I started to do more entrepreneurial things with them uh, about three years ago. So... Uh, about that time, I also took them to uh, a, an adult entrepreneur boot camp. So basically, I took them out of school for two weeks. Uh, there is uh, a guy, uh, he's called Roger Hamilton. He is uh, having uh, events all over the world. So I took them to his two weeks boot camp, which again, is not at all meant for children ever. Right. Uh, he's never had anyone, not even being 18, I think, on that and they were at the time probably 10 and 12, which was embarrassing uh, and great at the same time. Because when you're young, you haven't learned yet to hold back. Yeah. So if you take the example, if I, if I say to a normal person anywhere, if I've tried this uh, multiple times at universities as well when I'm speaking, like who here likes to, to, to dance, who here likes to sing, uh, who here likes to draw, all three things we really could do when we were younger, but all of a sudden, add 20 years and now we can't draw anymore we can't dance or we can't sing which is embarrassing uh, while we still can do it so younger people don't have the same limits right. uh, they have very different perspective so therefore to have for example a podcast i mean younger people are used to run around and do their uh, tiktok or youtube or anything uh, already right. uh, and snapchat so they're used to be on online uh, so therefore to have a mic instead We'll do like we're doing now to do audio and video together. That's, that's super simple. So why, what do I say to them? I try to make them curious. So they will be using that curiosity to find their own way. I, I don't have any set way. I don't have, really have any plans. In the best of worlds, I would love to have Sean to be financially independent before he's 18. Yeah. And for people who think about what does financial independence mean, really? It means that he will have more income then he will out, have outgoing. So right. I don't expect him to need to have any university uh, loans or anything like that. Right, right. Uh, probably, be, probably be the same for Ivan. Uh, but right now, this month, he's doing taekwondo and running. So he's a bit up, <laughs> so he has off. So he priority. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, they're actually bo bo both going to go for a black belt in taekwondo, which oh, takes wow. a lot of time in the next month. So I hope they will... Yeah. Succeed. Well, they'll need it for renters, right? Um, yeah. Indeed, indeed. No, but yeah, uh, d yeah so the, the, the world has changed so much. So just to, to build on one word, a renter, uh, next generation, generation uh, Z or Z, as we say over here, very much, they don't need to own anything anymore. They just like to have access when they need it. Like yeah. it might be an Uber, it might be uh, a shack to, to, to crash. A uh, place to sleep. Uh, yeah. They don't need to buy things. So I think we've got some huge changes in in the real estate sector uh, and the whole service industry. Everything's changing so fast at the moment. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and I have. Challenge. Yeah, go ahead. I know. I was going to say I have a cute story too because my son and daughter-in-law uh, for my granddaughter, uh, she just bought her first investment property, right? Perfect. And of course, she's she's five, so she yep. can't own the property. Yeah, so yeah, she yeah. doesn't own it, but she thinks she bought it. Um, yeah. they were buying a property and, and she said, I want, I want to be a, you know, a landlord too. I mean, I want to own a property. So they said, well, yes. we need money. You have yep. to have a down payment. And I don't remember what the money was, but it was probably like 20, 30, $40, something like yep. that, which was a big thing for her because she'd yeah, been absolutely. taking it in her piggy bank and, and she was pulling out the money and she yep. brought her money, including coins in a, a Ziploc bag, right to the closing 
And of course they closed on the loan, but then they passed a, cu a few documents to her to make it feel like she was. Yeah. And she, her name is Molly and she spelled her name at the time, M-O and the L's were backwards. M-O-L-L, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she signed it and it's all on video and she, she was just oh so proper about it. And yeah, it's yeah. really neat because every month that they receive income from the property, she yes. gets a little income too. Second. And they're teaching her, you know, what to do with it and where to save it. And I just think it's the coolest thing in the world. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and of course, her little sister was at the closing and watching too. And she's three. And she said, well, I want one too. And they said, well, you have to save your money from all your, you know, Christmas gifts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, birthdays. yeah no, I, I had the same. Like for, for the first year when the, the boys were working in the business, uh, producing content. So we had the Facebook uh, group where we present things and then also the, the podcast. So they also had to, to work for this. Yeah. So you think about like normally you've got pocket money, but pocket money just like appears uh, like out of magic. So instead I decided to take um, one of the, the multi-let units I have. It's, it's 10 professionals living in the house, shared house. So it means that the, the income of that one is yeah, super rough numbers just to give you your yeah. your listeners some idea so we talk about roughly a half million uh, dollars in value for the property a bit more uh, and it's uh, 10 people living there and uh, it's it's cash flowing around five and a half thousand per month right gross uh, so that means that ultimately after everything has been paid there are a number of people who owns this one so i took half of my uh, holding in this this one so i had a quarter so now they've got 12 and a half percent divided yeah. between the two of them. Yeah. So all of a sudden, instead of giving them pocket money, they now have cash flow, assuming that there has nothing been going wrong with the property right. and it's full. And then depending on what, what I would get would, would be my share, that would basically be their income. So they will start to see that when you don't have tenants, you don't get pocket money. Uh, when uh -huh. you do have everything right, then you get more. And eventually they will also, of course, they have access equity in this one because it's only in, in a company so they have shares in the company so right, all of a sudden it, right. it, it's, super, it's super real uh, and uh, now they, they have uh, real estate and now they care because it actually affects also their pocket money yeah. uh, and, and, and both of them just want to do one thing with the money do you know what that is what save <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. So can I am so glad. Yeah, I mean that's what they learn is because once you have it yeah, in your cool. hand and it's a, and a exactly. good amount, yep. now it's yep. like, oh, I don't want to let go of that good amount. Yeah, yep. and then yep. I'm sure they're involved in it as well, and you're t helping them walk through, you know, what happened, yeah, exactly. what kind of yeah. issues you've had. That's awesome. Yeah. I love yeah, so that. So Charlie likes to learn how to to buy shares. That's his next thing. Yeah, that's where we're going to put the money. <laughs> uh, time plus real yeah, estate is a good money. thing. Yeah. Nope, yeah, time yeah, value yeah. money, no doubt about it. I love it. Go for it. Well, it's been absolutely wonderful getting to know you. And I, if anyone has any questions about how to, I mean, we have lots of links again, you know, so yep. that people can reach out to you and find out what you're doing with your kids, what you're doing with your businesses. But if someone wants to reach you directly, what's the best way for them to reach you? Yeah. So again, uh, I've got two different podcasts. One is called Investing Skills. One mm -hmm. is called Invest in You. Yep. The letter one where we have lots of guests. Uh, it does what it says on the tin with both of them. Uh, you got the book in the show notes, which is mentioned. Yeah. Uh, if you like to reach out directly, I use LinkedIn a lot and I love to help other people. Uh, and if I can help you, whoever you are on your journey by connecting, whatever I, I will. So feel free to not only follow, but you're welcome to connect on LinkedIn if that helps you. Uh, and you can also follow me on any of the social media things I like to create useful things yeah. so, and yeah. we're already connected and i saw you exactly. post something a few hours ago as well you were talking about some things so yeah um, i think that's wonderful well it's been a pleasure and i want to say thank you so much i mean there's no no wonder uh everyone wants to work with you you're very giving and sharing a very open book and i and i love that you're willing to help people uh that you don't even know it's wonderful yeah, exactly. and, and again it's i want to congratulate you with what you're doing with your children and um that's, that's wonderful. You're serving so many people. So again, thank you so much for being a guest on our show today. Absolute pleasure. Thanks so much. You're welcome. 
Thank you for listening to Mortgage Lending Mastery. Looking to streamline and launch your practice by accessing Jen's tools, courses, classes, presentations, and resources? Visit jenduplessis.com to learn about the features and benefits thousands of other professionals have experienced by enrolling in Jen's Lifetime Membership Program. Isn't it about time you consider a coach to take your business to new heights? Contact Jen to start your application process today. Thanks again, and be sure to tune in next week.